all our dear students today are, we are going to practice how to apply accruals and prepayment concept and how to prepare an expense account using accruals and prepayment concept now before going this uh, through this lesson you must go through the previous lesson and that was uh, the video in which i explained what is basically accruals and prepayments so the concepts underlying accruals and prepayments are important and if you have already watched that video now we can continue how to prepare this account now this is my own question and i'm reading the question for you on 1st april 2015 ard that is me rented a premises for 10000 per annum now first of all we need to understand that either we have taken the premises on rent or we have given our premises to someone else on rent now how to understand this on 1st April, ARD rented a premises for 10,000 per annum. PA stands for per annum, that is annual rent. Payable on equal installment. This means if we are paying the rent, therefore we have taken someone else's property on rent. Okay. So in that case, rent is an expense for us. Okay. So what we need to do, we need to make rent account. Basically, we are uh, going to make the rent account and this is an expense account. Okay. And we'll be covering this rent receive in later part of the uh, some other lesson. Okay. Now, what we need to do, we need to make a rent account. Just remember one thing that rent is basically an expense for the business. And for an expense, uh, we studied in the previous video that we need to make an account with the name of PAAP. Now, what is this PAAP? Prepaid, accrued, accrued, and prepaid. So, rent can be prepaid or it can be accrued. Prepaid, this means we have uh, paid rent for more than uh, more months than actually we have used the property. Okay, it's a prepaid expense. And if we have paid the rent and we have not used the property yet, so therefore it is an asset for the business. Okay, so an asset is debit in nature, therefore the balance BD would come on the debit side. Uh, so th if the balance brought down, opening balance is on the debit side for an asset then the closing balance must always come on the credit side. Now accrued expense we studied previously, it is a liability for the business. Okay, so uh, the nature for liability is credit. This means we have used the property in the previous year, but we haven't paid for a few months rent. So therefore we owe the rent to our landlord. Okay, so it is a liability for Mr. ARD. So if, if it is a liability, the nature for liability is credit, then the opening balance would come on the credit side then the closing balance must come on the debit side. So in order to understand this, that where does the opening or closing balance would come, we are going to write a shortcut mnemonic that is P, -A -A -P, P, A, A and P. We are going to write in a Z shape. Okay. So whenever we are paying rent, uh, uh, as you may, aware, may be aware that rent is an expense and the nature for expense is always debited. So whenever we are going to pay the rent, the entry would be rent account would be debited and we need to cross reference it with a bank account. Now, as you may be aware that rent is an expense and it has a debit in nature. Now, what happens at the end of the year, at the end of the year, rent account would be credited uh, like all other expense accounts and we need to transfer it to where an income statement. Now, in this question, as you can see, we uh, have taken the property on rent on 1st November. Now the question here states that the year for Mr. ARD is ending on 30th November. Now what we need to do, we need to count the number of months from 1st April till end of November that how many months we have used the property uh, for. Uh, so if I start counting from April till uh, November, April, May, June, July, August, these are five months. After August uh, becomes uh, September, October, November. So therefore, we have used the property for eight months. Now, if we have just used the property eight months this year, because we have just uh, taken the property, this is a new property that we have taken. So in this year, we are not going to charge rent for the entire 12 months. Instead, we are just going to charge the rent for eight months. Okay. So, so applying a, a, an accounting concept with the name of matching concept. Matching concept, my dear student states, that income and expenses shall be matched for the same accounting period. So if we have just uh, taken the benefit from this asset for eight months, so therefore 
uh, if the income has been generated from this property by the use of this property for eight months so the expense should also be charged for the eight months and not for the entire 12 months okay so we need to prorate this uh, 10,000 divided by 12 this would become one month rent uh, and that is I guess 833 one month rent let me calculate it for you guys uh, if I divide 10,000 with eight, uh, 12 months, the monthly rent would be uh, 8333. Monthly rent would be 8333. And if I multiply this by 8 months, so the 8 months rent out of the 10,000 is only 6666. And as you can see, if it's a 6.6, 6, uh, I need to round, out, uh, round off it to uh, 667. Now, this is basically the rent that needs to be charged this year for 8 months. Now, uh, let us see uh, in, in an entire year basically there are 12 months and we are paying the rent in uh, four equal installment as you can see first rent would need to be paid on 1st April then the second installment need to be paid in 1st July third installment on 1st October and the last installment would be on 1st January so my dear students if there are 12 months in a year and if we are making four equal payments in, in, in any particular year, if I divide 12 months with four payments, this means each payment would be for three months. Okay. So each of these payments in each of these payments uh, that we are making to our landlord, we are actually paying rent for three months. If uh, you must remember uh, the table of three, three fours are 12. Okay. Now, basically, we are paying the rent uh, in four equal installment and for each uh, payment is for three months. OK, so now the first payment that we made was on 1st April. Then the second payment was in 1st July. Thirdly, it was on 1st October and the fourth payment would be on 1st January. Now, if you see, we have taken the property this year only and on 1st April, we have uh, taken the property on rent and the year is ending on November. Now, as you can see from April till November, uh, we are going to pay only three payments that is April, July and October. Uh, how is that so? Because the January would not fall in this year. Why? Because we have taken the property after January. Okay. So in this year, we are just going to make three payments that is April, July and October. Now, the first payment that we made uh, on April was for April, May, June. So basically rent is being paid in advance. OK, uh, we have taken the uh, property on 1st April and on the first day of the year, we have paid our landlord the rent for the first three months. That is April, May, June. After June, the payment that we made on July uh, belonged to which months? It, it belonged to July, August, September. OK, now the third payment is important for us. The third payment that we made uh, on 1st October would be for October, November and December. OK, this payment was for three months, October, November and December. Now, out of these three payments, uh, out of these, yes, out of these three payments, uh, the last payment was for October, November and December. OK, now, as you can see, the November, uh, November is our cutoff date and our year is ending on 30th November. OK, so now it's not necessary that every business uh, must uh, end their financial year on December. OK, whenever the business has been started after 12, exactly after 12 months, the year would end. Now, uh, Mr. ARD's financial year is being ending on November, but we have paid the rent till December. Now, as you can see, we have used the property for October and November this year. But the rent of December is basically prepaid. OK, we have paid the rent uh, on 1st October for December as well. But the December would not fall this year. Uh, instead, December is for the next accounting period. OK, so we have paid one month rent extra. This is a prepaid expense. Rent has been paid in advance. OK, so this prepaid rent is basically at the end of the year. It is an asset for the business. OK. And uh, as you may remember that asset is debit in nature. So the opening asset would comes on the credit side and the closing asset would comes on the debit side. Now, if the 10,000 rent is for the entire year, if we divide it for 12 months, monthly rent would be 833. And what happens if the 2500 rent is for three months? Okay, 
So how uh, did we get this 2500? Basically, uh, we have to pay 10,000 rent for the entire year and we need to pay rent in four equal installment. This means uh, one installment would be for 2500. Okay. If the 2500 rent is for three months, then the monthly rent again would be 833. So this 833 is prepaid at the end of the year. This would become a balance CD. So instead of writing prepaid, we are going to write balance CD. Okay. Uh, now uh, let us uh, key, uh, make the bank entries whenever we are paying the rent. Uh, as you can see, we have made three payments this year. So the entry would be beta rent account would be debited and the bank account would be credited. Okay, rent account would be debited and the bank account would be credited. Now in this year, we have made three payments. Uh, first one on April, then on July, and then the third one on 1st of October. So the entry that we are going to make would be rent would be debited and the bank account would be credited. And if the examiner is not mentioning that uh, either we have pay made the payment through check or through cash, we are always assuming that we have, we have paid through bank. Okay, so businesses normally do not deal in cash. Uh, instead, they usually deal through bank account. Now, as you can see, both of these sides are being balanced. Now, uh, what is the reason for that? Reason is that, my dear students, whenever we are uh, paying rent, we are actually paying it for three months altogether. Okay, so three multiplied by three, basically we have paid nine months rent this year, but we have just used the property for eight months. Now, what happens to this uh, one month extra rent? The extra rent is basically not lost. Instead, we are going to use the property one month in the next year without paying any rent for that. Okay. So this uh, balance CD, it is a prepaid. Now, in this question, as you can see, there are no uh, opening balances. Why? Because we have just rented the property this year. We have just rented the property this year. And if this is a first year for the uh, asset, so therefore we do not have any opening balances. Now this opening, uh, this closing balance at the end of the year would becomes opening balance at the start of the year. This balance CD is prepaid and this would becomes opening balance uh, prepaid at the start of next accounting period. After November would comes December, uh, but the year would be 2015 only. Why? Because in January, the year changes in January, it would be a balance. Uh, 2016 so this prepaid would be a balance bd now as you can see in this question i haven't written uh, prepaid and accrued with the pen we are always going to write with a pencil and we can rub this so that the examiner does not know the technique the secret technique we are using to solve this question okay let us practice some other questions we have another question question number four it is basically a past paper question from the igcsc examinations on 1st January, now what is the requirement? We need to make the rent account. Okay, we need to make a rent account in the ledger of Zikri. Means we are Zikri and we are making a rent account. Now, let it, let me read the question for you guys. Now, on 1st January 2017, uh, Zikri, we are Zikri, we rented a premise at an annual rent of 9600. Okay, so the annual rent of 9600, payable 6 monthly in advance. Okay, we have taken a property on rent for 9600 and we are going to pay rent 6 monthly in advance. So, instead of paying the rent all together for the entire year, basically we are paying rent in 2 equal installments. Okay, so if I divide 9600 annual rent by 2 payments, now the 6 monthly rent would be 4800. Okay, so I need to make 2 payments for 4800 each. Now, in this year, we paid two payments, one on 1st January for the first six months and then on 1st July for the last six months. So, therefore, this was basically the rent and let, uh, we need to make a rent account. Now, as you can see, there are no opening balances in this year as well, in this question as well. Now, because as you can see, the year is ending on August. Okay, the year is ending on August and as the year is being ended in August 2017, then the year must have been started on 1st September 2016. Okay, so the year was starting on 1st September 2016. And we have taken the rent not in September 16. We have just taken the property this year that is on January 17. So first of all, whenever we are going to make payments, uh, we will be making entry rent would be debited and the bank account would be credited. Now, as you can see, we have made two, we have made two payments this year. One payment was for six months 
and another one was for six months as well. So actually we have paid the rent for the entire year from January till December. Okay, we have paid the rent from January till December for the full year. But now as you can see, the year basically is ending on when? Year is ending on 31st August. Now what we need to do, my dear students, first of all, we need to identify that uh, either we have paid uh, the rent prepaid or accrued. Now, as you can see, my dear students, the first payment that we made on 1st January was from January till June. If you can count the months, January, February, March, April, May, June. This was for six months. Okay. Now, the second payment that we made on July was basically from July till December. July, August, September, October, November, December. We have paid the rent till December, but uh, the year for Zikri is ending on August. Okay, so this financial year basically ends on August, but uh, we have paid the rent till December. Okay, so let us count after August. After August comes September 2017, September, October, November, December. So basically we have paid four months extra rent. Okay, so we have used the property till August this year only, but we have paid the rent for four months ahead of that okay after august september october november december so basically four months rent uh, rent is prepaid so prepaid rent my dear students is an asset for the business okay so opening prepaid would always comes on the debit side okay because it is an asset and the closing prepaid would come on the credit side now instead of writing prepaid accrued i am solving it directly now as you can see the 4800 payment that we made for was for six months so what happens if i divide this 4800 by six months i would get a monthly rent okay if i divide 4800 with six months so the monthly rent is basically 800 and four months rent was basically prepaid so the prepaid rent would be an asset for the business therefore it is coming on the credit side why because the opening asset would come on the debit side and the closing asset would come on the credit side now let us balance this account and we need to calculate the income statement value. Now as you can see the greater side is basically debit side. Now uh, rent is uh, debit in nature because it is an expense. Now what happens at the end of the year we need to credit this rent account and we need to transfer it to where? A special account known as income statement. So this means we have uh, used the property for this amount. Now, can we calculate the number of months we have used the property this year? So, if we, we have taken the property on rent on January and the year is ending on August. So, if we count from January till August, this would be, I guess, 8 months. January, February, March, April, May, June, July, August. 8 months. So, therefore, income statement, in an income statement, we are going to charge rent for 8 months. So, how can we calculate 8 months rent? My dear students, if 9600 rent is for the entire year, if I divide 9600 with 12 months, so the monthly rent would be 800 and 800 times 8, 8 eights are 64. So this would be the 8 month rent would be charged to an income statement. This is basically my dear students matching concept also known as accrual concept. What does matching concept states? Matching concepts states that income and expense shall be matched in the same accounting period okay so if we have used the property for eight months therefore we have generated we have derived benefit from this property for eight months only in this year okay so if we have generated income for eight months only so we do not need to record the rent for 12 months okay because it will it would be violation of matching concept okay so we would need to match our income and expense and we need to match the timing of income and expense okay so this balance cd is basically uh, actually we have paid the rent for the entire 12 months but we have used the property for eight months only so the extra four months rent that we have paid uh, is not utilized in this accounting period therefore it is an asset for the business and this balance cd would becomes a balance brought down at the start of next accounting period okay so after august this would become first of september 2017 okay so this would be a balance bd for prepaid now as you can see there is no balance 
uh, brought down at the start of the year because this is the first year we have taken the property uh, and this balance carried down for prepaid would becomes balance brought down for prepaid. So in an examination, we are not going to write prepaid or accrued. We are just going to write balance CD and BD. CD is carried down, closing and BD is brought down, opening. Now in this question, uh, this is again related to the previous question that we did. We just made the rent account and the examiner has some other data as well. The following account appeared in Zikri's ledger via Zikri and there is a stationary account here. Now stationary is basically an expense for the business. Now as you can see it is an account uh, already has been made for us. What we need to do? We need to interpret this and we need to find out uh, some of the values. Now uh, let us first complete this account in order to move forward. Let us uh, just complete this account and then we can move forward. Uh, now, as you can see at the start of the year, we have a balance BD. Balance BD, it is a prepaid, okay. It is basically a POP account, prepaid, accrued, accrued and prepaid. Now, if the opening balance is coming on the debit side, therefore it is a prepaid balance. This means we have uh, bought the stationery in the uh, previous year, but we haven't used that stationery, okay. So therefore it is a prepaid balance of stationery. Now this year, what is this XY limited? This means we have bought some new stationery from where? From XY limited. So the entry that we made was stationery debited and XY limited credited. Okay. Now what is this drawing of stationery? Maybe we have, uh, we, we, have, we own a school and the school owner, uh, being a school owner, we took some of the stationery to our home. Why? Because maybe our uh, children uh, wanted that in their school as well. Okay. So we took some of the stationery for personal use maybe and this is a drawing. So the entry that needs to be made is drawing account would be debited and the stationery account would be credited. Now at the end of the year as you can see on 31st August the inventory of stationery was valued at 76. So this means this stationery is still left. Okay, so if the opening stationery is coming on the debit side, then the closing balance needs to be recorded where? On a credit side. Now let me uh, write this value here. So let us write this balance CD first. If the balance brought down is coming on the debit side, then the balance carried down would be on the credit side. Now this is the balance CD that we need to write. This balance CD would come here and this is 76, okay. We need to write this 76 here. Now what we need to do, we need to balance this, okay. Now as you can see, whichever is greater side, as you can see the greater side is debit side, okay. So what we need to do, we need to uh, total both of the sides, 84 plus 212. So the greater side is basically 296. So this would be total 296. This would come on the debit side. Now as you can see the bigger side would goes to both of the sides 296 and the shorter side would becomes uh, income statement here. Why? Because as you may be aware that stationery is basically an expense for the business. Now what happens at the end of the year this stationery account needs to be credited and it will transfer where an income statement. So how can we calculate this income statement value uh, from the total of the bigger side I need to deduct these two sides 76 and 15 okay. So the balance that we are left with is 205. So what does this 205 basically means? This 205 my dear students basically means this is the actual amount of stationery that we have used this year okay. This is the actual amount of stationery we have used this year. Now we have completed this account and what we need to do, we need to uh, solve these interpretations, explain each entry, state where the double entry for each transaction would be. First of all, the examiner is asking for balance brought down that uh, how come we got this balance brought down. My dear students, the balance carried down at the end of the previous year would become balance brought down at the start of this year. So what we'll be going to write, 
we need to write explanation that value of unused stationery at start of the year. This means we have bought the stationery in the previous year, but uh, we were unable to use that in the previous year. So therefore, it would become a balance brought down. Okay, it is the value of unused stationery at the end of the previous year or start of the current year. Now, what will be the double entry would a balance for a balance BD? So, if the balance brought down is coming on the debit side, then the balance carried down, that is closing balance, must have been on the credit side, okay, of the previous year. So, if the balance BD is on the debit side, then it would be a, a balance CD would be credit side. So, we need to write the credit uh, for stationary account for previous year, okay. So, if it was a balance CD in the previous year, then and only then it would become a balance brought down this year. Okay. And the balance brought down the side always changes. Now, what is this XY limited entry? This means, uh, dear, we have bought stationery from XY limited on credit. So, we need to write the explanation. We have uh, bought some stationery value stationery purchase on credit from where? From XY limited. Now, what will be the double entry? Uh, if the stationary account is being debited, then XY limited account must have been credited. Okay. So, if we are uh, debiting the stationary, then the credit entry, opposite entry must have been made in XY limited account. Okay. Because it is our supplier. XY limited is our supplier. Now, what is this drawing of stationary? This means we have taken out some of the stationary for personal use, okay, for our home use. So, we just need to write the explanation. This is value of stationery taken by Zikri via Zikri for personal use, okay. So, what will be the uh, entry, double entry? If the stationery account is being credited, then the opposite entry must have been made where? In a drawing account, okay. If the stationery is being credited, then the drawing account must have been debited. Now, the double entry would be debit drawing account okay debit would be a drawing account uh, now lastly the examiner is asking calculate the amount which would be transferred from the stationary account to income statement now as you can see i have already calculated this value for income statement okay we are already done calculating this value this was not given previously we have just written this value so this would be the value and this is the amount of stationary that we have used this year that is 205 Lastly, the examiner is asking, name the section of the statement of financial position. Another name for statement of financial position is balance sheet. Name the section of the SOFP in which the balance of the stationary account should be included. Now, we need to tell that uh, where would this balance CD would come or a balance BD at the start of the next period. Now, the stationary that is left over would be used in the next accounting period and it is an asset and what type of asset is, is it? It is a current asset, okay? Because uh, we cannot use stationery for many years, okay? For the obvious reasons because uh, it does expire, okay? In due course of time. So therefore, it is a current asset, whatever ink or paper or markers we do have, we do not normally use it for many years. Instead, we are going to use it in few upcoming months. Okay, so therefore it is a current asset. Okay, it is a current asset.